Hey everyone, we're back in Tech Talks with Tomer, in which I get to speak with uh, prominent engineers in the Stellar ecosystem. I'm Tomer, VP of Tech Strategy at the Stellar Development Foundation. And today we're going to talk about sidechains, bridges, and beyond. I am joined by Dr. Trosten Stuber, uh, CTO and of uh, Satoshi Pay and Pendulum. And I first became familiar with Satoshi Pay in 2017 when they announced their migration from Bitcoin to Stellar uh, for their micropayments platform. And ever since then, they've been a viable part of the ecosystem, various initiatives from enterprise payments to non-custodial wallets, uh, and now Pendulum, an independent blockchain. So Torsten, good to have you here. Uh, and to get started, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you ended up in blockchain and specifically in Satoshi Pay? Hey, Tomer, thanks for having me here. Um, so my background is that I studied computer science and uh, was really interested in technology in general. That's why I decided to go into research in theoretical computer science, computer linguistics, so natural language processing, machine learning, and uh, eventually got a PhD. Uh, but then I decided that I want to do something more practical. I wanted to found a startup or I wanted to get experience in founding startups. I found it incredibly fascinating to do something more hands-on and more practical than just research all my life. Um, so eventually I went to move to Berlin, uh, co-founded a couple of startups. And, and during that time, I became really interested in blockchain technology. So again, technology side was super interesting. So many new applications, but also so many super interesting challenges for me. And I definitely wanted to go in that field. And then I eventually combined my passion for startups and for blockchain technology and joined Satoshi Pay about four and a half years ago as CTO. Uh, and that was right at the time when we migrated to Stellar. As you already pointed out, we were using Bitcoin initially, and maybe I should explain what Satoshi Pay was doing at that time, namely micropayments with Bitcoin. And uh, at that time, particularly payment channels for Bitcoin because Bitcoin already became very expensive. Uh, and then we definitely identified that Bitcoin is not the right technology for micropayments. It's slow, it's expensive. And uh, then we looked for other blockchains and we found Stellar and it was the perfect blockchain directly for the application. It's very uh, low cost and very fast. And uh, so we developed our micropayment solution for uh, using Stellar. That was pretty much four years ago. Um, and then after, after that, we developed some other payment solutions like D-Transfer, which is a cross-border payment solution, also based on Stellar. And last year, we started to develop our own blockchain, Pendulum. And uh, of course, we are still uh, somewhere in the Stellar ecosystem because one of the first uh, projects for our blockchain Pendulum is a bridge to Stellar called Spacewalk. And I hope I can uh, tell you a little bit more about this today. That's awesome. So fun fact, uh, I think, uh, I saw that you joined Satoshi Pay in October of 2017. I joined the SDF in, in September of 2017. So we're basically uh, oh, yeah. out of time in the ecosystem. Uh, so can you tell me a bit about, obviously you've built a lot of things in Satoshi Pay throughout the years. How did you end up with this idea of building Pendulum, your own blockchain? Um, so when we developed D-Transfer, our cross-border payment solution, um, we were particularly interested in automated market makers because we wanted to have a solution um, to exchange all those great stable tokens that you find on Stellar. And uh, we found that automated market makers are uh, a great solution for that. Uh, we looked at Ethereum and saw that there's a lot of development there. But now, of course, you also have automated market making in Stellar. But at that time, it didn't exist yet. And we thought that smart contracts would be required to actually implement automated market makers or to have a rich ecosystem of automated market makers so that many people can experiment with them. And uh, so we found that we wanted to have smart contracts and we developed the idea of building a smart contract layer on top of, of Stellar, like a second layer on top of Stellar. That was the original idea for Pendulum. Um, and then we started to use Substrate for building Pendulum, which is a toolkit for developing a blockchain of course, you don't want to work. You don't want to start from scratch like you guys did when you started with Stellar. There's just so many things uh, that you need to look at, like building a peer-to-peer -peer network and everything, and it's just and, and a consensus algorithm. And of course, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. That's why we thought uh, Substrate is a great toolkit 
for, for developing our blockchain. And uh, so eventually we uh, redeveloped that idea that we don't just build a second layer on top of Stellar, but that we build a standalone blockchain, which will be part of the Polkadot ecosystem. And that we build a great and powerful bridge to Stellar to uh, bring all those great stable to tokens that you have on Stellar over to the Polkadot ecosystem. And I think interoperability is definitely the future. And that's why I think it makes both system much more powerful, Stellar and Polkadot, if there is a great bridge between them. Awesome. So smart contracts is a very hot topic right now uh, in the Stellar ecosystem because we're also working on uh, building a layer one smart contract execution layer in Stellar, uh, what we're calling Project Jump Cannon. Um, and we've been very busy in the past few months surveying existing technologies for smart contracts. So I'm really interested to hear how you're making decisions and what decisions have you made regarding the smart contract execution layer in uh, Pendulum? So first, I'm really excited that there is a new smart contract uh, project on Stellar. I think it's a really great direction. And I, I very much follow what's going to happen with the project Jump Cannon. Um, for Pendulum itself, we look at the different uh, developments in the smart contract space. And of course, you have two big players here. You have EVM smart contracts, which is the history. And that was the big milestone for, my, for smart contracts themselves. And most smart contracts are, of course, developed for EVM. Um, so we have a really wide code base, a really great ecosystem, very, very powerful uh, tools and projects. And uh, of course, we want to support them. But on the other hand, I see a lot of, uh, I, I see that there's a big future for WebAssembly smart contracts. Um, like EVM was the first generation and I feel like the second generation could be WebAssembly smart contracts because they are more efficient and there are way more uh, tools and, and execution engines for WebAssembly. For example, in the browser, there's a lot of development behind that, of course, and it will be a technology that is not just used in the blockchain world, but also in the web development world, in browsers and so on. So I see a big bright future for WebAssembly I think it's a great execution engine for smart contracts. And uh, we actually look into what we can support. And thankfully for Substrate, for the, for the blockchain toolkit that we use, you have both solutions readily available and you can just plug them into the blockchain and you can even plug in both solutions um, so that you can support both EVM smart contract and WebAssembly smart contracts. And uh, we are actually considering that option. Of course, there are new prob uh, problems to solve. Namely, you need to create some interoperability layer between both smart contract worlds uh, as uh, EVM smart contracts also very much depend on certain assumptions, namely that your addresses are Ethereum-like addresses, but for example, in Stellar or in Substrate, you have completely different address spaces that where addresses look different, they're encoded differently and so on. And uh, for Ethereum, you assume that all assets are encoded as, so to say, ERC-20 uh, contracts or different contracts. Whereas, for example, in Stellar, you have your assets directly in the runtime. They're directly encoded in the blockchain. And this, and similar, it will be for Substrate. Your assets are directly defined in the, in the runtime and not in the smart contract layer. And uh, you need to find a solution how you can combine both worlds. And there's a lot of development behind that. And I think uh, I, I think that we will definitely be a part of this progress, uh, this this uh, development. Yeah, the question of EVM versus WASM is um, is really interesting and is very difficult. You know, EVM is definitely the biggest player right now, um, and if you want to build, you know, for right now, then EVM is definitely. Uh, you know, the right thing to do. Uh, with that said, if you want to build for the future, you need to try and predict where the future uh, is going to be, right? Um, you know, EVM is definitely, um, definitely has its challenges in terms of, you know, things like storage and things like parallel execution. Um, you know, it's really difficult to build a parallel executor for the EVM because of the way that the storage is built, because of the way that, um, you know, you, you can't really tell by looking at a transaction what, it, what, what it's going to affect. So you can't actually partition transactions because they might intersect. Um, so it's definitely uh, difficult. And 
what we've seen in the world of Wasm in the past couple of years is that there's an explosion of new runtimes. There's an explosion of tools. We're seeing better performance that's getting closer and closer to native performance. Uh, so we're very excited about Wasm. An interesting thing about like the EVM versus Wasm discussion is that even in the Ethereum community, since 2015, there have been voices to try and migrate over to, uh, to Wasm. And they even have a project sponsored by the Ethereum Foundation, eWasm, which is an Ethereum flavored Wasm, uh, which is basically a subset of Wasm uh, for usage in uh, what back then they called Ethereum 2.0. Now it's not clear if that will ever happen, but there's actually a spec and it's, and it's super interesting. So uh, we're actually just about to uh, publish a, a blog post, maybe by the time we publish this video, we'll already already be out in which we talk a bit about the different technologies that we looked on at. And we're definitely focusing on Wasm uh, for the future. We think it's just a really great infrastructure layer to build on top of for the future. That's a great announcement. So I was really curious about what you're pursuing and uh, I definitely congratulate you to this decision. So um, when you say eWASM, that's also a really big topic. Um, we looked a lot at what Stella, or no, sorry, what Ethereum was announcing for many years already with Ethereum 2.0 and um, eWASM. So even Ethereum or the foundation or the, the ecosystem thinks that WebAssembly is the future and it's the next iteration of EVM. Um, but of course, it will take a while for getting adopted. So I, I guess it will be a couple of years and uh, it's of course, uh, a bet that you have to take on WebAssembly, but I think it will uh, be the right bet at the end. Yeah, and it's actually a bit of an easier bet these days because you look at other ecosystems like Near, like uh, Definity, like, um, you know, even like the Cosmos ecosystem uh, with Cosm Wasm and the various chains that support it. Uh, if you look at TVL, then um, Cosm Wasm is, is the second uh, biggest smart contracting execution layer because of the Terra ecosystem, which is uh, pretty huge and they use uh, Cosm Wasm. So we're very excited about this um, and I'm excited about having people in the Stellar ecosystem have access both to uh, you know, this Wasm execution layer that we're building and to other EVM engines through various bridges. Which takes us to our next topic, which is bridging. Uh, you've recently announced Spacewalk. Can you tell us a bit about that? So Spacewalk is a bridge between Stellar and Polkadot. Um, of course, Polkadot itself is a system of blockchains. So it's not directly connecting to the system, but it's connecting to individual blockchains, which are called parachains in, in, this, uh, in this network. So every blockchain that is part of Polkadot is a parachain. And as a parachain, you can decide what kind of features you have and what kind of tools you integrate. Um, and we develop Spacewalk in a way that every parachain can just plug, into, uh, plug it into their own uh, system so that they automatically have a bridge to Stellar. But of course, foremost, we as Pendulum will integrate Spacewalk so that there is at least this, uh, this bridge between Pendulum and Spacewalk, but that automatically will be a bridge to all the other parachains on Polkadot because Polkadot uh, automatically gives you a bridging layer between those parachains. That's uh, really cool and powerful. So at the moment, this bridging layer consists of mainly uh, being able to bridge assets so that you can move one asset from one parachain to another one. And uh, if we bring all those great stable coins for over from Stellar, then we can also distribute them throughout Polkadot. But in addition to this, in the future, um, this bridging layer will also allow you to uh, call smart contracts from one parachain to another one, and then you have really great interoperability inside that system. So uh, maybe to talk about spacewalk, um, when we consider what kind of bridge we wanted to have, uh, I think there are two fundamental technologies, namely centralized bridges and decentralized bridges. And for us, it was clear at the beginning that we want to have a purely decentralized bridge or a truly decentralized bridge for all kinds of reasons that are quite obvious to us. Um, uh, I, I mean, if, you, if we work in the decentralized uh, environment of blockchains, it, I think it just makes sense to also have decentralized bridges. Um, and 
it's not so easy to build a decentralized bridge, of course. There are a couple of, of problems you have to solve. Uh, you need to make sure that um, different actors that are in this decentralized network are really in independent and that there is no militia, no no attack. There's no at attacker that can over them, it can take over that network. And uh, we found a solution, or we adopted a, a solution from another bridge between Bitcoin and Polkadot, which is called InterBTC or Interlay. And uh, they found a way to incentivize the actors to not misbehave by using collateralization. And this is very powerful and definitely shows that, or you can very, very clearly prove that no one uh, has an intent to misbehave because they would uh, they would um, have a bigger problem at the end because their collateral will be slashed and um, they definitely suffer and, and lose much more money at the end than they could um, scam from other people in the network. So that's a very powerful bridging solution and we're going to adopt that for the Stellar Bridge. And how was the experience of migrating uh, a bridge or a protocol that was built for Bitcoin over to Stellar? Obviously, uh, verifying uh, a transaction is something very different between proof of work and the Stellar consensus protocol. How was that experience? Yes, that's the biggest difference actually between InterBTC and Spacewalk, um, because when you use when you use a proof of of work chain. Um, then you usually use, uh, use something that's called a, a chain relay, where you have a light verification system inside your smart contract on Polkadot side in that case. Uh, but for, uh, for Stellar, of course, it's different as Stellar is not using proof of work, but the Stellar, cons Stellar consensus algorithm. Um, but clearly, since we have been working with Stellar for a long time, we are quite familiar with everything regarding Stellar, also the consensus algorithm. And we found a way to um, implement an alternative solution for Stellar that's really very much based on how the consensus algorithm and, and the quorum system in Stellar works. Very cool. And when is launch? <laughs> so the launch is supposed to be actually already in two months. But uh, that's only for, for testnet, of course. The testnet is live already. It's a very simple testnet. Everything is in, in development. We are in, the, in an early stage. But we plan to go live on mainnet, on Polkadot mainnet uh, later this year. And then, and on actually on Kusama before that. So Q3 this year will be the launch on Kusama. And then we have an actual mainnet bridge between Stella and another mainnet. Kusama, if you're not familiar, Kusama is another Polkadot um, Polkadot like mainnet, which is called the Canary mainnet. So you can, um, you can test your new features on Kusama first, but it's not a test net anymore because you deal with real money, with real value. Um, but it's, it's considered to be more for an alpha versions or experiments. And then when everything is considered to be very stable, you will deploy it on Polkadot. And uh, that's why we will go live on Polkadot after we go live on Kusama. That's great. And I'm very excited to hear about all these bridges joining the network. Uh, we're also working on a bridge internally called Starbridge. Um, and we've recently announced a bridge bounty uh, to encourage other development teams to build more bridges between Stellar and uh, existing ecosystems. Uh, because, you know, as uh, you know, you're well vested in this idea of, of, of a multi-chain universe. So are we. We think that's the future and we're happy to see um, you know, great chains and great bridges being built. So Torsten, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of exciting things in the works. Thanks a lot. It was really good to be here.